You're watching Hot Walk Academy. My name is Ming Jin Tong. I want to help you master your kitchen. Let's cook. All right, on this episode of Hot Walk Academy, we're going to be talking about basic stir fry technique for non leafy vegetables. So, what we have here is we've got our Brussels sprouts. Now, Brussels sprouts is a little bundle of leaves. So why am I calling it non-leafy? Well, because leafy vegetables are gonna have a very high water content with big broad leaves. And as you can see, these leaves are more compact and the entire Brussel acts as one vegetable that would be more of a fibrous or kind of a tough veggie. So there's that. Obviously, we've got broccoli and here is some beautiful asparagus for us to work with. And the last thing you're gonna see here in our prep is our garlic. So let's talk first just about the tools that we're using real quick. Very simple setup, but you see, I've actually got two towels here. So here's my little secret. One towel is gonna be completely wet. Let me actually wet that for you. And what we're gonna do, when you are cutting any vegetable um, and you've got a sharp knife, always keep your knife sharp, you don't want your board moving around. So what you wanna do is get a wet towel and every restaurant kitchen will do this. Put that wet towel down, and you know what? That wet towel is gonna function like a non-slip for your board. That just makes sure that your board is not moving around so that when you are working with your product, you don't accidentally cut yourself. Also, another best practice, oh, drop my towel. Here is that second towel, and that second towel is for your knife hand. When you are working with vegetables or working with any food products, you wanna keep one hand dry and that is your knife hand and you want to make sure that you've got always a good grip on that knife and your other hand your non knife hand is your product hand and that's what you can use to move everything else around here's the basic uh, stir fry technique what we're going to do here is we're going to prepare all of our vegetables so we've got a bowl for each product and you know what i've got an extra bowl why do i do that this extra bowl actually helps us a lot because when we're done washing our veggies, uh, where do we put it to let it drip dry? This extra bowl always serves us. So get one extra bowl anytime you're doing veggie prep. Let's get started. We are going to start with our asparagus. We're gonna prep each one of these veggies. So the asparagus, uh, obviously the end gets a little bit woody, so you do want to trim it off. I like to just kind of, uh, get whatever product I'm able to in one hand, line that up along the end. And I don't want to cut off too much, maybe about half an inch just to remove that woody uh, part of the vegetable. And then for me, what I do in my kitchen is I do compost all of the ends. But for now, I toss everything in my sink, which is why we put it there and uh, we clean that up later. The very next thing that's important to remember is that when you cut your vegetables and we put it in that stir fry, as we are tossing our wok, each piece of the vegetable needs to be about the same size. Why is that? That's to promote even cooking as well as even tossing. So as you cut your veggies, remember you want them to be roughly the same size. And the other principle is that we are not gonna be eating this with a knife and a fork rather with a pair of chopsticks. And so each piece should be cut so that you're able to put it in your mouth and enjoy it without having to cut it. We do all the cutting here on the board. Okay, so here are the asparagus. And let me just quickly do the other half and we'll move on here. Our next vegetable is gonna be our broccoli. Now, look at this broccoli with this big, beautiful stem on it. You know what? Cut that off, but save it. I'll show you sometime what to do with this broccoli stem. Don't throw that away, it's a shame. The flesh on the inside of this really is delicious and beautiful. You can slice it thin, marinate it, and save that for later. For now, broccoli is such a wonderful vegetable to use. I'm gonna get rid of that stem there. Here's what we wanna do for broccoli. You don't necessarily need to cut that. What you can do is just break it apart by hand. There's no need to use your knife at this point. And we are gonna get the broccoli down to small enough pieces so that we can actually sear it in the wok. Uh, the other thing about broccoli is if you cut through the flour, it kind of makes a big mess. This is why 
um, peeling it with your hand prevents those little florets from going everywhere all over your board. When it gets down to that size, again, you can remove the stem, again, save that stem, and continue working. This is about the perfect size that we're gonna get all of our broccoli down to. So I'm gonna work quickly here to try to get that done. Again, just breaking it apart by hand. And when it gets down to something a little bit too small, I might actually go through this. Now, I wanna make sure you can see this here. We're gonna go down through the stem, but not through the florets. If I bring my knife down through the florets, it's gonna crumble those little flowers apart all over my board, kind of a mess. From here, you could just peel it, and that again will save it from making a big mess. And every size that I produce, I want it to be roughly the same size, again, for even cooking. One more time here, where I can go through the stem, but not the florets, and break that apart. If you have pieces, say that are too small, what will happen to those pieces? Those pieces that are too small, if you accidentally cut a piece too small, just throw it right in. Why is that? You can throw in a small piece because what's gonna happen in that small piece is it's actually not going to have an inside that's gonna steam cook. The, the entire piece of the small broccoli or small whatever you're doing, that is actually going to burn. And that wonderful burn is going to provide a char flavor for the rest of the meal. All right, these will go into our compost. Let me just kind of wash my board off real quick. And the last vegetable we're going to prep here is our Brussels sprouts. Here's how we do Brussels sprouts. Now, there's always a variety. When you buy Brussels sprouts, you're going to have these big ones and these real little ones. And the small one, cut in half, is about the right size. So this is what we're going to do. We're not going to cut too deep, but we do want to cut into the stem and remove that. And it's kind of hard to cut something that's moving around, right? So what you want to do is you want to put that flat side down onto your board and go right through the center. And that is about the size we want for our Brussels. I'm going to go ahead and use this extra bowl that I talked about and we'll put that in there. For these larger pieces, we're going to cut a little deeper into the stem because I kind of want to get rid of that real woody part of it. And then when you do that, what's real nice is that these dead leaves tend to fall off. We'll strip them off, put them in the compost. And what you want to do is get all of your Brussels sprouts to be about the same size so they're cooking evenly at the same speed. Now that we've got our product, uh, asparagus, our broccoli, as well as our Brussels sprouts all ready and chopped, we're going to move on next to the garlic. Now, the garlic is very important in our uh, non-leafy vegetable stir fry. And the garlic is what we use to flavor the oil. The step we call pao xiang in Taiwanese cooking. So this is how we're going to prep it. Uh, we are going to use probably about uh, three cloves of garlic. Okay, so this is the head. We're going to just break this right in half and get rid of uh, some of this paper. Again, we'll compost that. I'm gonna get about six of these cloves out here. Okay, what you wanna do is take the broad side of your knife and isolate one garlic clove and you just wanna gently pat it down and to break it apart. When you do that, what happens is that the, pap the paper, the outside, separates very easily, and that's about the right size there. So again, just give it a pat. You don't need to do it too hard. If you do it too hard, your garlic, especially if it's fresh, is going to kind of splatter everywhere. You don't necessarily want to do that. And here we go. We're going to peel each one. Again, just grab it from the front, and that peels off super nicely. Now, for sizing, it's also very important to make sure that your garlic is the right size. So this is the size of the garlic that I have right now. And it's smashed, which means the inside, especially the juice, is exposed. And that's a really good thing, we want that. However, keep in mind, the bottom of your wok, where your oil is, is only gonna be so full of oil. And in order to make sure you have maximum contact between the hot oil and the garlic, I wanna make sure that that garlic is actually flat enough. So I'm just gonna give it another pat just to make sure that when it's at the bottom of my wok, it's actually sitting firmly in the oil and not above the oil. Okay, that's about good. Let's go ahead and put that into our prep bowl. And we are ready to head over 
to the stove to stir fry these veggies. Okay, we've already done all of our prep. We've got all the asparagus is chopped, all the broccoli is cut, and all of the Brussels are cut. Now again, we cut them to be the same size and not only same size, but the ideal size so that the outside of the food is cooking in one way, which is the hot oil is searing it, and the inside is being cooked another way, which is the heat, the radiant heat from the wok is uh, bringing the moisture on the inside of the vegetable to its uh, point of boiling, 212 degrees, and that is steaming on the inside, okay? So we are gonna have, I'm, let me talk you through what I'm gonna be doing. Then I'm gonna turn my vent fan on. It's quite loud, so you may not be able to hear my voice as much. I'll try to narrate as much as I can, but the basic process is we're gonna heat our pan up, we're gonna put our oil in, and we're going to let our crushed garlic, bao xiang, which is to release its essence, its flavor into the oil. We're gonna remove the garlic into this backup pan so that it does not burn. And then we're gonna crank the heat on our wok as high as we can get it. And I'll, I'll kind of show you how, how high you want the heat. And then we're gonna stir fry our veggies, throwing our garlic back in. So here we go. First step is to turn our fire on and we're gonna let that go only to um, kind of a low heat. Now here's why. When you add your garlic to the oil, you don't want your garlic to burn. Garlic burns very easily in oil. So how much oil? Let's do our, let's do asparagus first. So with this much asparagus, which is, uh, I probably have about half a pound to three quarters of a pound of asparagus there. I want enough oil to coat the bottom of my pan. Now, again, when you ask, how much oil do you put? You need to ask the question, what is the oil for? Here's what we have oil for. Oil promotes movement in the pan, so when you move the product, it's able to slide around. Secondly, oil is gonna be cooking the food. The oil gets very hot before it evaporates into smoke, over 400 degrees. That's gonna help cook the outside of the food. And the last thing is the oil will create a vapor. And that oil vapor, as it ignites, will impart that wok hei, that guo qi, that smoky element to your stir fry. So I don't want my fire too hot. I can already see the smoke rising. That means it's a little bit too warm. Let's test that out. We're gonna throw some garlic in there. And look at that. It's already, it's already sizzling. Now, that particular sizzle is a good amount of sizzle. You want that. Um, garlic to begin to brown and begin to sizzle, but you don't want it to burn, okay? And already that smell is starting to come out and I've got my fire just on low here. I'm gonna continue to allow my garlic to cook in that oil. Again, I want to give flavor to the oil, but I don't wanna burn the garlic. All right, a little bit more here and we're gonna remove that garlic. The reason I'm gonna remove the garlic is because I want my oil to get very hot. I am gonna put this garlic back in, but for now, I'm gonna turn my fire as hot as it goes. I like to get my wok to about 700 degrees. The only way to know that is if we measure. So here we go. Let's shoot our infrared thermometer in, and that is reading at 618 degrees. And we're just gonna wait for it to get a little bit hotter. Let's test it again. I'll move my oil around just a bit. and it's now reading 600 and 647 degrees. And believe it or not, I actually want my wok just a little bit hotter. How do we get it hotter? You just set it on the fire and let that go, okay? Let's do one more test. All right, we are at 702 degrees. That's hot enough. Let's go ahead and start our stir fry. What we're gonna do is take our asparagus and this is nice and dry. It's not gonna splatter because there's no moisture in here. Take your time, don't rush. You can add a little bit of salt now. 
to your dish, that nice sizzle, what's happening, is the oil is cooking the outside of the asparagus. And the inside of the asparagus, the vapor, or the water vapor is starting to happen, and it's gonna cook the inside. We want to toss it so that it cooks evenly. And I want to leave it so that the outside of the asparagus is char. This is a wok sear method. No one likes a mushy vegetable. By only cooking it a short time, the inside is still going to be nice and crisp. The outside is going to have a great char to it. And that's about one minute of cook time. And really, that is going to be enough for you. Let's go ahead and plate that. All right, and there's your stir-fried asparagus. Now, I admit, I forgot to put the garlic back in. I apologize. However, the garlic is in the oil. It's going to have that great flavor. And let's try one of these pieces. It's going to be super hot. Oh, that is so good. So nutty and salty. What a great flavor. All right. Same method. Let's start again. Turn the fire on. We want only a low heat. How much oil do we put? We put enough oil to help the product move around, coat the product to cook it, as well as uh, to create that oil vapor. So let's do, the, um, let's do the Brussels next. About that much oil, we'll put in some freshly crushed garlic and we're gonna let that sizzle. I'm gonna add just a little bit more oil. The goal is to infuse the oil into, or the garlic flavor into the oil. Okay, we've let that garlic go long enough. We're gonna go ahead and remove that garlic so it doesn't burn. And this time I'll try to remember to put it back in. We're gonna crank that heat. Right now it's reading 437. Let's wait. Now, you really wanna be patient. If you put your vegetables in at a low temperature, a terrible thing will happen. The inside will overcook. You will no longer have a crispy vegetable. The outside will not char. You won't have that smoky, nutty flavor. You must let your wok get up to temperature. It can feel scary sometimes leaving such a high uh, leaving such a high fire under your wok, just go and go, but that is the way to do it. Be patient, let your wok come to temp. Let's check it. We are at 674.6 degrees. We'll just go for another 10 seconds here. All right, we're at 7.05. I think we're ready to go. So, hot oil. Here's all my Brussels. Let's go right in. All right. Let's give that a toss. And again, in with the salt. This is coarse sea salt, works just fine. I'll get my heat glove back on. All right, let's go ahead and toss that. A review one more time. We're gonna let it sit because we want the outside to get that nice char. And we want to toss it because we want to cook it evenly on the inside, okay? So we're gonna alternate between letting it sit and moving it around. And you might wonder, you know, I'm not using my wok ladle very much. Why is that? Because for a non-leafy vegetable, they tend to move around so much, you don't really need to scrape the, the wok at all. So here we go. Let's give it some more tossing. And again, that's been in for about 30 seconds. We only need a few more seconds here to let that cook. You can see how it's uh, blackening so nicely on the outside. Those char parts are just delicious. And you don't want to overcook the inside. So we don't want to cook it for too much longer. Just about a minute in the wok.
Let's let that sit to develop some more char on the outside. Being careful not to overcook the inside. You don't want a mushy vegetable. Okay, that's looking really fantastic. Let's go ahead and put that on our plate. All right. And you know what I did again? I forgot to put the garlic in again. I don't know what my problem is. <laughs> this time we will succeed. All right, here we go. Last time, low heat, oil for movement, for cooking, and for vapor. We'll put our, the rest of our raw garlic in. We're gonna let that sizzle. Let the fragrance of the garlic come out of that oil. Now, here's something tricky with broccoli. Sometimes you think, I gotta add more oil, because as soon as you put the broccoli in, all the oil disappears and it just makes a lot of smoke. The oil is inside the florets like a sponge. Don't worry, it will come back out. Do not add more oil. You need to trust yourself with the amount of oil you put in the first time. You don't want to make your broccoli overly oily, okay? Let's move that around a little bit, get the other side. We got a real nice browning there of our garlic. And I can smell that amazing fragrance. Let's go ahead and remove the garlic. And you know what? I keep forgetting the garlic. This is how I'm gonna uh, make myself remember. I'll put it in. I'll put it in right now to my broccoli. That way we won't forget to, we won't forget to add it. Okay, let's check the temperature. Temperature is reading 650 degrees. Let's, that go, let's let that get all the way to 700. All right, I had a reading of 730 degrees. We are ready to go on that. So here we go, again, our broccoli. And this time, because my garlic, I don't want it to burn, I'm gonna toss it a few times. Okay, here we go. All right, a little bit of salt. And glove on for the heat. And I think I said before, it's very tempting to think, oh man, look at how dry that is. I don't have enough oil in there. The oil, like a sponge, has gone into the broccoli. It will come back out, don't worry, don't add more. Broccoli, especially broccoli, is a little bit more difficult where you need to be tossing it and letting it sit. And it takes a little bit more time. The asparagus and the Brussels cooked relatively quickly. The broccoli is gonna take a little bit more time to cook. Be patient, keep it at the high heat, let it sit, move it around, it's all okay. Give it a toss. and let it rest. All that smokiness is gonna be imparted into our broccoli. It's gonna give it a great flavor. You'll actually notice how incredibly resilient broccoli is. Broccoli doesn't burn too quickly. Uh, it's a great, it's just a great vegetable for doing a wok sear. Oh, lost a piece, happens all the time. Don't worry about it. You can see the pieces of the garlic here that are starting to burn. That's okay. One other trick you could do if you want is if you don't want uh, to take this long stir frying your broccoli, what you can do is you can add some water and cover it and it will actually cook a lot faster. That water will help to cook the inside of the broccoli. I don't want to do that. You can eat raw broccoli, it won't hurt you. It's actually quite delicious. I don't mind having the very inside pieces of my broccoli a little bit raw. You might actually like it that way. A little raw inside and nice and burned on the outside is just delicious. And again, 
all the time we spent making the pieces of the broccoli even, I can actually see I have some big pieces, some small pieces. Um, I should have done a little bit better job on that. The more even you have it, the better it'll toss and the, the more evenly it will cook. All right, so look, that bro some of that garlic is really burning now. Um, we wanna keep it moving. Maybe you don't wanna add that much garlic <laughs> like I did in this particular cook. All right, that is about done. Let's go ahead and put that on the plate. This has been the non-leafy vegetable basic stir fry technique. And really, I like to think of this as a wok sear technique. Thanks so much for joining us. I hope you learned something. And again, this is not for your entertainment. Let's cook together. Invest in a wok. These are very cheap tools and begin to understand how to cook these items at home. We wanna get that information, that knowledge embedded in our hands, that tossing rhythm embedded in our arms so we are cooking instinctively. Thanks so much.